Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Hi you. guys, and welcome to One Minute Tennis.com. In today's session, I want to talk to you about watching the ball. And I want to show you the second way of watching the ball. Almost a whole tennis community obsesses with how Roger Federer and then Rafa Nadal and now Carlos Alcaraz look at the ball on contact. But it's not the most common way that professional players watch the ball. I want to show you the alternative, how to apply it to your game, and why that means that left or right eye dominance is totally irrelevant to how you time the tennis ball. Now, we've all seen examples of how Roger Federer looks right down into contact when he strikes the tennis ball. Rafa Nadal is the same, and these days, Carlos Alcaraz also the same. But either way, most tennis players don't look at the ball that way. They use extrapolation. Serena Williams, Novak Djokovic, Medvedev, great ball strikers, Sinner, great ball strikers do not look down into contact when they hit the ball. In fact, ne their eyes are never near contact when they actually strike the tennis ball. What they are doing is using extrapolation to actually time and center the ball. Extrapolation is when we see the object and predict its path from what we've already seen. Everybody watching this video will use extrapolation. You can't walk, ride a bike or drive a car without advanced extrapolative skills. But we're going to have those skills in varying levels. So some people can reverse park a car because they instantly understand the space that's available. Other people find that difficult. This is an example of advanced or less advanced extrapolative skills. So to watch the tennis ball, what I'd like you to try and do is to figure out how far away you can watch the ball and still make good contact with the ball, still time it well. So instead of trying to watch the ball right down into contact, we actually watch it on its way and first of all pick a point that's maybe one, one and a half meters away, watch the ball till there, and then strike the ball. And now move your vision further away. So two meters away, two yards away. And the ball comes and I watch and now I strike the ball. And gradually bring your point of focus further and further away until you no longer time the ball correctly. When you find your sweet spot, where you can see the ball, where you need to focus on the ball, and you can still time it correctly, then you've found your sort of extrapolation point, or like a vanishing point, where you can watch the ball and still time it well. The result of this means that whether you're right eye dominant, left eye dominant is irrelevant, because you're not looking down to the side, focusing with one eye, you're looking with both eyes. The perception of depth is usually better, because we're using both eyes, and that's how we actually judge depth and distance as objects approaches. The reason that this is important is that what happens to most players is they get the worst of both worlds. Now, you see, if you keep your head down on contact and really can see this close, then that's fantastic. But you're in a very, very small minority, and it has to be natural. But the pro players are not doing that. They're looking away and leaving their head still. But for most players here, in trying to see the ball to contact, they're going to be moving their head at contact. They're going to be tracking the ball while they hit the ball. And this is a fatal error because it means that you're moving through contact. It means that you'll lose balance and the likelihood of clean, consistent ball striking is very, very small. If you ask a top golfer to strike a golf ball with their eyes closed, it's easy. If you ask them to strike a golf ball moving their head up and down, then the ball will go anywhere. The balance is very important and the head is fundamental to your balance. So by looking forwards instead of tracking down, then inevitably you will have better balance and therefore also probably strike the ball better. As an example of this, I was not watching this ball when I actually caught it. I watched it as it approached and then looked away prior to contact. This is an example of extrapolation. It wasn't a guess, it was a prediction of where the ball would go, given the information that I received as the ball approached me. So test out your extrapolative skills. Test and see which is the best watching technique for you. When you find your natural focus, everything becomes easier, and you'll find that you have more balance, your timing is better, and you'll strike the ball cleaner. If you like my ideas on tennis, check out what we're doing online. I'm helping players all over the world with a unique blend of video analysis and one-to-one -one coaching. Or check out our books on Amazon. We have books on every aspect of the game 
and the books break down the strokes into the biomechanics and the science of the strokes, and then super simple solutions with great illustration. Everything we do is designed to help you become the best tennis player you can and become the best version of yourself. So unless it's natural for you, don't watch the ball like Alcaraz, don't watch the ball like Federer, watch the ball like most professional tennis players. Find your extrapolation point, keep your head still, and you'll play better tennis today. Thanks for watching. See you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.